Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this tutorial, it's going to be a really quick one actually as well, um, I'm going to be covering another Cinema 4D tool, and uh, we're going to be looking at the transfer tool in this tutorial. So let's get into it. Um, in other programs, uh, like 3ds Max, um, there's something called uh, the Quick Align tool, so it allows you to snap an object to another one. Uh, its position and its rotation and um, Cinema 4D has actually got something very similar so if you go up to tools and go down to arrange object uh, you can see there's this transfer tool it, um, yeah transfer and that's what we're going to be looking at I'm just going to dock it up here so um, we can access it quicker so I'm just going to press shift C and then search for transfer there it is and I'm just going to drag it into the thing up there so you can see it's up here now so I'm just going to cross this off um, or even shift C again no nope. okay so um, so I've got a red cube in the middle here and I can snap it to any of these objects so if I select my red red cube um, this now becomes active because you can see when you haven't got anything selected it's grayed out so if we press this now and look in our attributes man manager, we've got some uh, options going on. Now everything at the moment here is greyed out, so we'll just press apply um, and that will actually set it in motion. In fact, if I come out of this again, so select our cube again, press this, you can see that um, when I select these objects, you can see this line here you can see a line connecting these objects so okay let's let's just click on this object so it will snap to the position of that object now it will snap to the position of that one and this one and this one everything seems to be working out really really good um, so you can see that it snaps to the pivot of these objects so if I snap to this it will it will match its pivot to the pivot center of of that so everything's good there but you'll notice when I snap to this one it goes to its pivot center but now it's through the floor so what I could do let's let's just get back here and when I click on the floor again it's it's back in the floor so let's just get it above ground again um, here you can see you got enable move and so you can check the whole thing on or, on or off um, but you've also got uh, the enable move for the X, Y, and Z position. So if I t ticked off Y, which is up and down, uh, let's actually just go back to our initial state. I'm just going to control Z, so we're in the middle. Okay. So now I've got Y unticked. When I go to this character, it would normally have gone through the floor because it's matching its pivot, but it doesn't do it on the Y anymore. So it'll actually keep its Y position as I go around which is really handy and you can do the same thing for the Z position um, you know it will it will go to where it's got to go but it won't move in the Z so it won't be going in this direction forwards and backwards and the same thing for the X position as well so it'll move in the Z but it won't move in the X okay and the same thing with scale now you will notice the um, I don't know. Let's let's scale one of these down. Let's let's choose. Let's choose this, and we can actually alter its radius, bring it right down. But you'll notice that when we select our cube and then click on the transfer tool again, if I select this, it doesn't appear to scale down at all, and that's because there's a difference between size and scale. So let's just bring that over here, and um, we'll pick our sphere again. And we'll make it make it big again. Um, we're going to coordinates now. This is the scale here. So if I if I make this, I don't recommend doing this at all. Changing the scale of an object, resize it, sure, but um, scaling it's always a always always a dangerous one. So I'm going to select my cube again and press this, and then and you can see that it's scaled down with that object. So it matches the scale. I mean, it, you might find that useful for something. Um, so, you know, the options there. But, personally, I'd leave scale un... 
Oh, okay. Let's get it back to the beginning again. Okay, so let's. Uh, sorry, sorry about this. Let's rescale this. So it's 0.5 of its uh, original scale. So with this, I'd recommend um, leaving that scale unchecked. So you can see it goes to its position now. If you're not going to need it, there's there's not a lot of point really. Um, okay, and the other thing is rotation. So I'm going to untick Y so it stays on the surface. I don't need to scale either. And so the rotation of all these objects is uh, normal. But if I was to, say, grab this character and rotate it this way, like this, something like that, and then go to my cube and go to this, you can see that its scale is also matching that object. So it's a good way of being able to snap an object to another object, uh, you know, match its position and its rotation. Plus, when you've got the rotation, then it means that when you select your cube um, and make sure it's in local, it means that you can then position it where you want it to be. There you go. He's got a little cube backpack or something, but it'll it it'll match the rotation of that object. So that was that's it, really, guys. Um, that was just a quick uh, look at that um, transfer tool because it's uh, it's quite handy. Uh, when trying to align objects and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to say about it, really. No. Um, as always, um, get voting. I've just done a... Uh, the previous tutorial to this was one about um, uh, real flow, which I'll be doing another one on soon. It looks like you guys liked it, because that's winning in the votes at the moment. Uh, if you haven't voted, go to digitalmeet.uk and go to this page. You have to be signed in to vote, but it's free to sign up. Um, so yeah, get voting, that'd be great. Uh, on another note, uh, I've added more talks from Cineversity's, uh, the 2017 NAB talks, so now we've got batch seven and eight in there. So that's worth having a look at. Um, let's just have a look at batch seven. So we've got some 3D workflow techniques, and we've got 50 minutes of tips and tricks from Chris Schmidt. I like that guy, he's good. Um, and we've got some more stuff there. We've also got NAB uh, Batch 8. So we've got some character tools for 3D motion graphics. Uh, organic shape morphing inside Cinema 4D. Creating the Cineversity ident. And we've got some custom tools for scalable production techniques. So there's, there's loads there. Um, and it's well worth looking at. Um, so yeah, come and have a look at that. Also on my blog page now, I've actually broken the blog... Uh, intersection so we've got uh, uh, just a regular blog post and they usually they're usually talking about tutorials that I'll put up but I've got uh, free assets that I'm putting up so any free assets now that I uh, find around the web I'm gonna be putting on the blog page and um, I'm hoping to get this as a filterable blog so you'll have free assets um, just regular blog posts and also inspiration posts so uh, let's go find one of them so the inspiration posts are basically um, like this um, it's a post that will be something that I saw on the web that I thought was in, uh, inspirational um, might inflame the mind or something like that this is a video by uh, Lawn and I thought the um, animation for this track was absolutely beautiful in fact let's have a little look yeah, lovely. Um, so, I actually, when I saw this, I thought, I wonder if you could achieve that in Cinema 4D. So I've been actually taking a look at this uh, using the Sketch and Tune um, module. And uh, I've had some varying success so far with it. So if I do figure out a nice way of doing that, um, I might do a tutorial on it. Okay, so yeah, like I said, get get voting for the um, tutorials. I've got a feeling that Real Flow is going to win it. And um, yeah, don't be a stranger. Also, don't forget to check out uh, the donation page. Like I said, if you've got a couple of shekels to help me keep this boat afloat, um, that'd be great. We're only at 3% funded so far, which is a shame. But um, yeah, if you've got any 
uh, spare dollars or pounds or whatever, lob them in there. Uh, and also, if you want some bang for your buck, um, you can visit the merch store or the um, store in general. But I've got some T-shirts and stuff for sale on the Digital Meat Red Bubble page. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.